Record. All right. Get your fake sponsorships out now. What? No. Are we back at it again? <laughs> no more. Fake sponsorships. We do that at the end of the session. That's true. Okay. Well. <clears throat> so, when we last gathered, the party managed to defeat the demonic monstrosity known as a knot that was summoned by the Soul Liberation Cult. And once that was done and taken care of and everyone's physical wounds were handled, Francesca took Rosalia and they went to go meet up with Regis to assess the damage in the rest of the city and to check on any uh, injured civilians. And as Zeril and Cynthia were in the process of engaging in their typical arguments, Francesca silenced the both of them and had them explain to the party uh, what their deal was. Because everyone that was conscious noticed the very strange happening of Cynthia reacting to, to the pain that Zeril should have been reacting to. And amidst that explanation, it was told that when Zeril's home dimension was attacked and destroyed by the Devourer, he was more or less dead. And when Korra saved his life, he put him in a magical suspended state of animation. And the only person that would have been able to save Zeril was Cynthia, but the only way that they were able to do that was via a cursed. A cursed, a cursed forbidden spell, as Regis called it. And their souls and their lives are quite literally linked to each other. Cynthia feels all of Zero's pain, physical pain. Zero feels all of Cynthia's emotional and mental pain. And Zero is more or less immortal. He cannot die by any means necessary, except for the fact that if Cynthia were to die, both of them would die. And once that explanation was had and the group learned a bit more about some of their newfound allies, they decided to interrogate the priest hostage that they had, except for the fact that Henry got too trigger happy and impatient because the priest was refusing to answer questions and Henry wound up killing him, which resounded in him getting punched in the mouth by Yashua, getting berated once again by Dreva, and pretty much being placed on extremely thin ice with the party as a whole. And when Lion investigated the now dead body, he found a watch. The priest's book that, we, that he was using to cast spells in the map. And once those items were thoroughly investigated and identified, they've come to find out that the pocketbook carried a very large list of spells used to more or less take control of people, take the free will from them. Submit them to the caster's bidding, etc. And on the map, Yashua discovered something called the Interitus Exigen Project. And while that has yet to be explained, on the other side of the map, there were 12 X's. And it was very quickly deduced that those are the locations that the cult is aiming to hit next. And some are repeat areas. And just as the group was trying to come up with a proper way to come up with a plan to attack and intercept all of these locations across the entire city and not just the district, a familiar red feathered friend came into the scene and amidst some very confusing actions, uh, 
it introduced itself as Xander. And this is where our story will resume. Ba-dum. Deepest apologies. I'll be right back like in five minutes. Okay. Did you say apist? He said deepest. I, th- I heard apist apologies. I have to order like, food because we have guests and it's starting to get on my nerves. Apologies again. You're good. Hmm. Did Zandor take a new form? I'm sorry? Uh, did Zandor take a new form? Uh, no, you, the only people who have met uh, the Red Chuck well before it introduced itself as Xander were Yashua and Dreva. To you, it is just oh. a small Red Chocobo named Xander. I go pet it. Uh, you can roll <laughs> animal handling. Uh, he is well, currently, I'm, I'm he is currently being cradled by Yashua at the moment. He also breathes fire. So. That is perfect, that's my element. So, you you missed the check by one point, so you reach out to pet Xander, gonna and bite me. even though he is cradled in Yashua's arms, he unexpectedly seemingly blinks out of, resist- out of existence and is currently sitting on Yashua's shoulder. Huh. Wanna put it again. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Let me pet you. So th- <laughs> this time, <laughs> you reach out to Xander, and he watches your hand, almost as if he was watching a prey of sorts, and he does not even attempt to move away from you this time. In fact, uh-huh. he almost leans into your hand. Almost, though. Who's the cutest As he clears his throat. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. While I do admit that I am very small, adorable. And cute. I have not come here to play uh, uh, to be a pet, essentially. I mm. am. Let's say that I am an agent of the mystic. So, everything magic related, everything related to the arcane, etc., etc., I more or less know. Almost everything there is to know. Additionally, while I know of Korra, as I'm sure you all are well acquainted with him, he and I have yet to speak one on one. I do know his associates though, but that that's not entirely why I'm here today. <clears throat> Why is Chocobo? I have... Why, thank you! I have... (laughs) Come to you all to... Relay... A message to you. And to... Explain what that... Strange black flower was that you all... Are in possession of. But first things first. So... When... The lot of you defeated a knot, which... Very impressive, by the way. Um, most people wouldn't have lasted as long as you all did. More or less defeated the damn thing. But, when you defeated it, while it did cause the resident demons in the area to return to their plane of existence, their residual energies are still lingering around and if left unchecked 
while the original creature will not return, the energies will form into one of many malevolent beings and go about causing trouble again. Hmm. So, while I could go take care of the situation, it does not involve me. It involves you all. Now, this isn't to say that you have to go do the, do it immediately, but the sooner you take care of the problem, the better for everyone. And yeah, that, that seems fair. Yes, yes. And as for the flower that you are in possession of, I could give you the long explanation, but for time's sake, I'm going to give you the shortened explanation. Said explanation being, once you ingest, and I quite literally mean ingest the flower, you have to eat it, it will, let's say, it will open your soul, so to say. And Will we die? There is a risk of dying, but I do believe the payout is worth risking your life. I mean, you've all done that plenty of times since you got here anyway, right? Proceeds to consume the flower. Can I eat it? I want to eat it. Um, if you wish, I would very much prefer to finish my explanation, but if you it's want like to... It's like licorice. Oh, he did it before me. Well, well, that takes all the fun out of this. But regardless, uh, say hello to. He checks his non-existent watch. Say hello to. Hellish pain in about thirty seconds. Oh. And oh no. But once that pain subsides, if. It doesn't incapacitate you. Uh, say hello to a new wellspring of power. I eat it. I'm eating it. Okay. So do I do I have to roll something to like to endure the pain? Yes. So I don't fall on my knees and roll around. I need a Constitution saving throw, a medicine throw. And a survival throw. Okay, so a constitution save. Yep. And a medicine roll. Constitution, medicine, and survival. Oof. This is gonna hurt. Well. And survival. Okay, so... You two, uh, wolf the flower down, as Xander's giving his explanation, and Mel, the pain that you feel, for a brief moment, you feel as if someone is very slowly and very meticulously driving a larger than average needle through your temples. <laughs> You also feel a burning, agonizing sensation in your chest that almost causes you to drop to a knee, but you tough it out, you remain standing up and standing strong, and you feel a change within your body. Ooh. As for I'm getting more teary eyed. As for Yashua, mm. the pain that you feel, you feel like you were in a battle with yourself, and the copy that you were fighting shot you with your own attack. In your left shoulder, you feel as if you almost don't even have one. And you also feel an an ice-cold, almost sub-zero level sensation 
in your feet, and that is what causes you to fall down and temporarily writhe in pain. But a few seconds after that, with Xander watching over you, you rise to your feet and you too feel a new sensation of power. And Lion, you feel as if you are being strangled, suspended into the air, as you feel as if you had the wind knocked out of you, you had a small building dropped on your head, and before long, you feel your arm tremble, but you regain your senses and you stop everything that you feel and you take a, a deep breath, you calm down, and you feel compelled to draw your weapon as you can see a, a small glow on it, only visible to you. <clears throat> Henry, your character feels as if it is being violently electrocuted, thrown around the space as if it, you were a pinball on a pinball table, and you feel an extraordinary throbbing beating sensation on your forehead. That causes you to become dizzy for a few seconds, but afterwards, while you are currently leaning on the closest object to help you sustain your balance, it subsides and you too feel a change within yourself. And now I will do Dravo's rules. Oh my god. Okay. So as for Drava, what she carefully consumes a flower and once it is no longer in her hands, she is clutching at her throat because it, it feels as if someone has a saw blade several saw blades and is very slowly dragging them down the inner linings of her throat she also feels as if she has been simultaneously set on fire electrocuted and dropped in a vat of acid all at the same time and as she is experiencing these sensations you can see her eyes flicker from her natural non-glowing red state to her typical iron glowing state when she happens to become quite angry and for a brief moment her nails extend just a bit before retracting but she stands back to her feet and she is examining herself as she too notices the change and now, Xander, he takes a look at you all, he makes sure that you're all stable as he flies over to you and he looks at you but his eyes are glowing, almost as if he is personally examining you. And once his examination is over, he sits back atop, he sits atop Yashua's head and he says congratulations you all have grown one step closer to completing what you came here to do and as for me the dm telling you what you just unlocked you now have the option of and hear me very very carefully but first i'm going to play the unlock sound So, you now currently have the option to either multi-class, meaning you can pick another class to add to your repertoire, or you can enhance your limit break. 
if, if you decide to enhance your limit break instead of it now requiring a thousand limit break energy that cost will drop to 700 your limit break will automatically be a critical hit and you have the ability to transfer your own limit break energy to someone else one time a fight and once a day if you decide you want to multi-class you can reference the rule book and decide what other class you want to be that class will begin at level one whatever exp you get your subclass will receive half of that if you level it up and you happen to receive something that gives you a stat bonus that stat bonus is cut in half if you level up and you receive a new attack or an ability it is in its natural state the choice is yours and yours alone we can you can think about it ponder on it we can make those adjustments either at the end of the session or once the recording ends for today anyway now that sounds good. <coughs> continuing on Xander asks you so how does the new stroke of power feel as I'm as I'm sure it was uh, quite the experience having to more or less suffer through that for a time a nasty price to pay for power I felt like I shot myself yes um typically when those are well for starters if and very this is a very rare occurrence that one happened to be found if they are found the person who ingests them typically goes through an experience that they happen to inflict or happen to have inflicted upon another creature and it's very obvious you very enjoy very much enjoy firearms and gunmanship so that is why you felt as if you shot yourself as for the rest of you um how are you all feeling my body feels like i was just pummeled and crushed by a building but uh i think i'll be all right Oh, that's very good to hear. Very good to hear. Is this how that hostage felt? All shocked. Hmm. Um, I am going to say uh -huh. yes, most likely. The taste of your own medicine doesn't taste good, doesn't it? Okay, now, now that I have more or less delivered the message that I needed to deliver, I am going to continue with what I was doing prior to this, unless you have other inquiries and questions that I feel like answering, I will answer them. If not, I will take my leave. I grab the chocobo from sitting on my head and I just expect him. I kind of shake him around a bit, but not too violently, just softly. <laughs> Are you okay? You just ate something weird. Uh, in, in response, he is going to say, for what? 
<laughs> for what purpose are you shaking me for? I am not a toy, but, um, yes, I am fine. I eat these things quite regularly, actually. So, okay, so care to explain what you just ate? Because it just started to float and it was really hot. Oh. Um. So that... <laughs> that watch over there held within it a Ignis Shard. Those things are absurdly hot to natural flesh. So, if any one of you had physically touched it, you would have immediately erupted into flames and melted on the spot. Oh. Oh. Pleasant. Can I touch it? I'm joking. As for why I ate it, one, I was hungry. Two, it's a very bad idea to just let those float out in the open because they only stay suspended in the air for so long. Because once they touch the ground, well, anything within a, oh, 500 foot radius would have erupted into flames and ceased to exist, physically. Ow. And lastly, um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was bored. And once I sensed it nearby, I figured this was going to cure my boredom temporarily. And it did. Joshua just laughs. He just laughs out loud. Additionally, um, that shard that I ate, there are several others in the district and I'm going to assume that what used to be a priest over there was genetically modified to withstand the heat because no no regular mortal should have been able to withstand the heat let alone Wear it inside of a contraption like that watch over there. And... Oh, I keep saying and, but there's more to add to my explanation. And... That... Is going to be used as a... Well, as a... What do you people call them? Um... Detonation devices? Yes, yes, those. Um, the other ones that are in the area are going to be used as detonation devices. And you should probably figure out the fastest way to eliminate them. And now that I think about it, we can work out a deal. If you happen to find the rest of them, you can bring it to my attention and I will take care of the rest. In exchange, I can potentially bestow upon you what you are lacking magic-wise. If you so desire. Good enough for me. I don't seem to downsize see. this. If there were any downsides, what would they be? Um... I get free meals and you all get nothing, except exhaustion? He says, that seems about right. He says that, tilting his head to the side in genuine confusion. Huh. Well, regardless, if we don't get anything, we have to get rid of them. Well, Xander's given us an opportunity to do so. Right, right. Also, um, this is one of the most colorful regions of man-made technology and whatnot that I've been to. 
and I personally would want to see it remain. I very much enjoy the colors. And yes, I can see color. Most chocobos can't see color. You're a special chocobo. You're a special little bird. Yes, oh, well, I true. I am red. Uh, wait, um... Hmm. To make a long bio biology and history lesson short, uh, all colors of chocobo except red and gold aren't capable of much magic-wise. Um, us red and gold chocobos are more or less capable of wiping an entire continent off of a map. And that's only in our, on our infantry stage. In our adult life, well... Have you ever seen half of a planet go missing? Yes, multiple times. I've seen a whole whole. I've seen a whole solar system disappear. That's pretty frightening. If a bird could do that. Yes. Well. <laughs> yes, I'm going to leave it at that. I am not going to continue that line of thought. Good birdie. Good to know that I have a there, there. thermonuclear device on my head. <laughs> if that's what you want to call it, sure, feel free. Now then, what I think awesome. I have taken up quite a bit of your time, but let's let's do something about this exhaustion that I can see with you all. And so, with that being said, Xander jumps off of Joshua's head. He takes flight. He begins circling around all of you. And <clears throat> as he is circling you all, before long, you can feel the effects of your exhaustion leaving your body. As you are now, all of you are now back in tip top perfect fighting condition. Nice. And once he finishes flying around you all, he says, Okay, I do believe I have done enough. However, um, you all are still mortals. So, um, please do not neglect to sleep, because you all are, well, after fighting a knot, once I removed the exhaustion from you all, it felt as if you all had been fighting for, uh, I'd say about several days, but, ah. Oh. Uh, Regardless, regardless, um, go on and take care, be safe. Oh, that's another thing, too. Xander lets out a small chirp, and right above Lion's head, a small whistle materializes. If you oh, haven't... If you happen upon any other Ignis shards, please blow into this whistle, and I will come and take care of the problem. Huh. Alright. Works for me. And now, I shall take my leave. Xander leaps off of Yashua's head. He looks to you all, he flies towards the closed window, and as whichever one of you decides to reach to open it, Xander phases right through it.
Man, what even are chocobos? This is insane. I don't, um, can is there? Um, do life forms go thermonuclear and take off and you know blow up half a world? Is that normal here? Cynthia looks at you and says, "Dude, um, if I had an answer, I would, but while." What he said is true, red chocobos are very dangerous when angered. Um, I don't remember hearing about any that can do what he described he can do. And Dreva, she speaks up and she responds with, Yeah, um, that was easily the most frightening small creature I have ever seen in my life since I've gotten here. Um, I have never personally been that close to a red chocobo, nor have I ever spoken to one, but I thought I knew how dangerous they were, and it turns out I didn't know shit. Well, if I blow this whistle and tell him to, like, blow something up for me, would he be mad if there wasn't, you know, like, one of those stones involved? You want to find out? I mean, I'm not really. <laughs> <laughs> rather not get blown off the face of the planet. Hmm. You think... You think if we exchange one of those shards, he, he will let us call him as an artillery strike? Do you want to test the theory? Well, we don't have the shard. No, no, no. About calling him and him getting angry. Oh, no. <laughs> Listen. Listen, if we can't even beat a dragon that could consume a fucking universe, what makes you think we could fucking take on a, a little hot menace? For boss fight round two? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I I got disintegrated once. I don't want to do that again. Well, shudders yeah, from is. personal experience. What if second finds the charm? Well, Damn. he likes you a lot, so maybe Yashua should call him. Well, I was very good with animals during my time, okay? You know, he just saved our lives. I feel like he could just as easily end them, so I, I don't I don't think this is the move. Yeah, let's not tempt fate. <laughs> Anyways, where... Is uh, Zero dead and he said he was on his way back? Uh, yeah, he did. He, him, Francesca, uh, Rosalia, and Regis, they're all together. They, they might be coming up anytime soon, but um, in the meantime, uh, and this is probably an inappropriate moment for it, but are you guys hungry? I'm famished. If you didn't say something, I would have. Okay, I'm gonna go make something. I'll be back. You need some help? I'm also a good cook. <laughs> um. Uh. Sure. Uh, follow me, I guess. As long as he doesn't like the place on fire. I have, I have, I have a uh, my uh, my motives to go with her to the kitchen. And it's nothing bad. I'm just simply curious. Be the link between her and um, Zero. Okay. Don't burn her. <laughs> All right. So, Yashua and Cynthia are in the kitchen preparing food. 
Uh, is anyone else want to do something before I continue on with that scene? Mm, no. No, I think we're good. Okay. We're good. Can you kill off Clone Henry in the top right corner? <laughs> How did that get there? I don't know. Fight it. Fight <laughs> it. There can only be one. Alright. Can we kill test tube Henry? <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> so, with the scene now being in the club's kitchen, if that I will change the music to something a bit more uplifting and not so not so serious. Uh, let's let's play this. <clears throat> I was kind of expecting a cooking mini game. <laughs> I was expecting to force another dance. <laughs> A dance off in the kitchen. Well, now that you said you were expecting a cooking mini game, guess what's gonna happen? A, yes. A, a scene earlier than intended. A cooking mini game. Let's go. Cooking mama. Yeah. Okay. So, with the scene being now in the bars in the club's kitchen, Cynthia asks you. So, uh. What made you want to help me make stuff? And can you slide me the pepper? Well, for starters, I'm very curious about the dishes in this world. Secondly, I'm also curious of, about you and Zero. So I've decided this will be a good opportunity to get to know you better. Also, I get to learn how to cook in this world. Since my cooking methods are very different. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I'm not really sure how um cooking in your world works, because I don't really think it'd be any different from you know regular cooking. I mean we have we have stoves, we have blenders, we have ovens, we have the occasional flamethrower for when a particular piece of meat requires to be flamethrowed. Um, we have crystals, etc, etc. Uh, Zero likes to be lazy and he's made drones specifically for cooking when he decides to hold himself up in his cave for days at a time. Um, can you reach over to the fridge and Pass me the pan that has behemoth meat written on it. Yeah. Wait, what is a fridge? Huh? This thing? Yeah, it's a, it's a giant square shaped container. Do you not have refrigerators where you all come from? Mmm. We. If you're asking me if we keep our food cold, no, we keep them in suspended animation. It doesn't decay. That's. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. And what exactly? Did you mean when, uh, about the link between Blondie and I, as Cynthia prepares to uh, remove all of the meat out of the pan and begin to separate it? Well, you mentioned that there is a connection with you two, where what whatever damage he takes, you feel, yeah, he's immortal. Yeah. It's just, we have, it's not exactly the same thing, but whenever we pilot machines, we mentally integrate with a machine. And whenever the machine takes too much damage, we take a lot of mental stress. It's, I thought it was very similar, but yours, but the link that you two have is so much more sophisticated. Well, I mean, when you put it like that, yeah, it is pretty 
sophisticated and at first it was a lot it was a lot more trouble than what it was worth if I'll be honest with you well no that's it was just a lot of trouble okay um the the reason we'd argue a lot is because well he would do something that I would find to be irritating and through me being irritated he too would also be irritated and it, it's a process that we had to learn how to deal with well we hope you two figure out a solution together well I mean we do have one as these days when we do quote unquote argue we're not actually mad at each other we're just giving each other shit for the sake of giving each other shit most of the time um can you hand me that red bottle over there yeah here thank you as you slide her the bottle you see Cynthia's tail move to her right and pull out a muffin from a pan that you initially did not see and she plops it right into her mouth <laughs> yeah sure chuckles at the sight Yasha points at him and asks, what is that? What? what? That device, that silver looking device. Looks like it opens. Do you just pour something in it? Oh, yeah, that actually. Hang on, there's nothing really good on. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, um, that's, uh, that's one of Zero's uh, experimental kitchen wares, as he likes to call it. Um, you hit the button, it opens up, you can dump whatever kinds of spices and herbs, even fruit, into it, and you add just a little bit of water or whatever liquid of your choosing and it blends it all together into a sauce for you instead of having to do it yourself huh. yeah he uses it a lot um, boss uses it sometimes and I try not to because I well, I enjoy making everything by hand because I can see it all happen you know uh, could you Open the stove for me. The s stove? Yep. You see You see him just in confusion? Stove? Fuck. Um look to your bottom left. There's a door with a handle on it. Pull that down. Can I do like a strength roll where like I accidentally don't pop off the door? Because sure. he doesn't know how to Alright, you grip the handle, and you manage to keep your strength in check as you very gently pull it down. However, amidst you trying to keep your strength in check, you notice that there is a small hand-sized indentation in the bar. Damn, um... I guess you were trying to be careful. So sorry. Uh, it's no big deal. It can be replaced. And Henry it, looks over the it, counter and says, "Fan, she's gonna be mad." <laughs> it's not necessarily. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be replaced. It's not that bad. Um. Eh, whatever. It'll be fine. Just let Chief know whenever she comes back, though. 
Anyway. So. I'm going to place all of this delicious seasoned behemoth meat in the oven, in the stove. And, um, could you help me prepare some small, uh, do the concept of finger foods exist where you come from? Yeah, we have finger foods. Okay, cool. Uh, help me prepare a bunch of those. Yeah, sure. Okay. Pulls out a knife. Uh, what's that for? It's a knife. Don't you use knives to make stuff? Food? I mean, yes, but everything has already been separated. We just have to um, wrap them all up. Ah. He just just digitizes it. Okay. Okay, and now as you are a gunman I want to see how good you are and how quick you are with your hands so let's make a game out of this I'm, uh -oh. I'm going to place this plate in front of you and I'm going to put mine in front of me and on the plate there are crackers two different sets of meat cheese and fruit slices and there's an instruction manual on how to put them together. You, you are essentially making small, bite-sized sandwiches. So uh, lunchables, got it. Uh, this is gonna be simple. We're gonna see how many the two of us can make within a few minutes. If you make more than me, I'll give you, I'll give you some gill. If I can make more than you. You gotta give me some gill. Alright, I'm game. Alright. Uh, we're gonna wash our hands really quick. So just give... Take a moment to do that. And when she says that, she... She repositions herself on the counter. Or in front of the counter. She raises her hands in front of her, and you see her ears wiggle for a quick second. And before you know it, both your hands and her hands are covered in soap and water. And once your hands are thoroughly washed, she wiggles her left ear, and both of your hands are dried. Yeah, sure. Is just staring at his hands, magic again. Yeah. Um. So, fun fact. Before we get started on our little game here, uh, I was the one who pretty much drew up the architecture and the floor plans for this place, and I forgot to include a sink in the kitchen. So. Huh. I took the time to learn how to cast water, and I made my own little hygiene-based spell. So I can just think, essentially, and I've got soap. Hmm. I, I, I find it to be pretty useful at times. Is there... Any special method to learn said hygiene spell? Um, I I remember writing it down, but I think it's at my house. I'm I'm pretty sure the written version of it is at my house. Uh, if you really want it, I can get it for you later. Or I can have Zero send a drone to go get it. Yeah. 
That would actually help out a lot. I like, I honestly like to keep my things tidy and myself clean as much as possible. Good, good. Okay, sure. Sounds like a plan. Hmm. And now that I think about it, let's change the rules of our little game. Or rather, the wind conditions. So, instead, we're going to reshape them from finger foods to we're going to put them in kebabs. And instead of one giving the other gill, you are going to have to fork over one of your guns for me to examine. And if you win, you can request for me to teach you any spell that I currently know. All right, I think that's I think that's a lot more fun than just you know forking over money. All right, you got yourself a deal. Okay. And with that being said, Cynthia cracks her knuckles and her wrists and her eyes are quite literally sparking as she is now ready to get this shit on and get this shit going. So, as for the rules for this game, you are going to roll <clears throat> because you're working with your hands and working with food because there is no outright cooking skill we are going to use sleight of hand I was going to say uh, medicine but mm -hmm. we can use sleight well, of hand well, you're 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 the DM. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just I, thought I had an idea. Slide of hand made more sense. No, I I had an idea. I had, we're still gonna use medicine, but I had a had an idea, and I just said that. Hmm. Okay. So you're going to alternate between rolling medicine and sleight of hand. If okay. you happen to roll a critical success sleight of hand you will make double of the food if you happen to roll a critical success on a medicine you will make the best possible looking food appearance wise it will literally be shining it's showered in gold and whoever reaches 400 first will win. Sound good? Yep, sounds great. Okay. <clears throat> so, we're gonna start it in. No. Since he's gonna ask you, are you good to go? You, you, you ready for this? You can tell she's very excited to engage in this friendly contest with the. She asks, but Yashua is like deep in thought, and I don't know if she could notice. There's like ones and zeros in his eyes, <laughs> like just <laughs> passing through. Okay. All right. And with that, our mini game will commence. You may take the first roll. What do I roll first, medicine or sleight of hand? Uh, start with medicine, and then it will be, it'll be medicine, sleight of hand, medicine, sleight of hand. Okay. I'm waiting for the base drop. Okay, there you go. All right, starting out with an 18. Uh oh. Alright, you're at 18, she's at 22. Alright, 
Alright, we got 38. Go for a slide of hand. Uh, if anyone else would like to uh, comment or even uh, attempt to partake in the contest, feel free. Henry jumps all, over and jumps in. Uh, wait, say that again? Both of you spoke Henry at the same time. Jumping in. I'm gonna then focus on this. Okay, what are you doing with this jumping in? I'm helping, so I'm going to do a sleight of hand also. Who, who are you helping yourself? I help. Or are you helping Yashua? Yashua. Okay. You have a default one for sleight of hand? Exactly, that's why I'm helping you out. I can't win it myself. Oh my god. At least it'll be like back home, right? <laughs> oh yeah, I remember making rations for everyone. That was fun. Oh, uh, that's you can roll medicine. Alright. Uh, Cynthia notices Henry leaping over and throwing Yashua a bone. And... She she chuckles, but she doesn't necessarily say anything at the moment. Oh, it's hers. Medicine roll, so it's my medicine roll. Alright. Uh, Yashua and Henry, the two of you are currently sitting at 102. Cynthia is currently sitting at 124. Alright. 113. Okay. So Cynthia. The after that is going to speak up and say, "Huh, you uh, you are half bad at this." Well, I I try. Yeah, well, you better uh start trying because. Pretty soon, I'm going to hit my sweet spot, and then it's gonna be fucking over for you. There's like a sweat drop coming out of that shot. Okay, well. So, with Cynthia announcing that she's about to hit her sweet spot, sure does follow up on that, and she Im immediately makes 90 more of the food that all of you are preparing. So she is currently sitting at 245. Now at 197. <coughs> okay, well. She is sure as shit in the zone. And she is making them at a breakneck speed. And she now currently sits at 325. Yashua just excels. Well. Well, I'm, I'm at least I'm helping with the finger food because I, I, 
kind of knew I wasn't going to win this. <laughs> oh my god, that was almost a 20. Almost. Uh, by you saying that, Cynthia says, Oh, what? Come on. It, don't think like that. That's not the mindset of a winner. Uh, and the score is... Currently... Uh oh. Cynthia is sitting at... 362. And... With that last roll, Yashua and Henry, you are at 254. This is completely one-sided. He's only 90 points ahead. Only <laughs> takes two criticals. Yeah, only took two crits. Maybe it takes another two crits to catch up. Yeah. A charisma. Yeah, she's she's looking at all of this delicious food in front of her, and she damn near started eating it. That's why I had her do a charisma roll. Hey, you may do your rolls. Okay, so it's and medicine. for those not in the kitchen partaking, uh, yes. oh shit! Perfect food. Uh, all right, nice twenty. Uh, the food that you have made with that roll is now literally shining. Uh, as I was saying, for those who are just watching the event happen, uh, before long, you quite literally see a small mountain of finger foods just piling up in front of Cynthia, Yashua, and Henry. Oh, 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 bon appétit. Bon appétit. To be fair, Cynthia's probably going to eat half of it. Yeah. I'm gonna help. I'm pretty famished. Y'all greedy. Ooh, that was close. Okay, and with that, our competition ends with the score being 438 for Cynthia and 343 for Yashua and Henry. And the both of you step back, and not, not, I'm sorry, not the three of you uh, all step back to just look at all the food that you made. And it is very, very tall with it all stacked on top of each other. You think um. that if you were to perhaps dump all of this into a pool or carry this around in buckets you'd probably need about mm, three buckets each to carry all this around oh wow and just as you all finish up Cynthia lets out a, a small victory laugh as she very quickly begins devouring the food that she made on her side <laughs> not your side like like she is more or less taking them by the handful and just cramming them in one by one oh, 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 mm. oh she's just wolfing them down she is going to town on this shit is her tail also working to grab them too yes She's using both her hands and her tail to eat. Well, Yasha yeah, grabs man, like man. two plates, places some of them, and just, you know, 
takes them over to the crew over here. And yeah, uh, amidst uh, <laughs> amidst her eating, she says with her mouth full, "Food's done. Come and get the snacks before I stop existing." Here are some finger food. Cynthia trails behind you with what she managed to leave behind as that stack of 434 uh, sure did turn into 50. <laughs> well, I lost fair and square. I materialize one of the revolvers and I ask her to put out her hand. She receives the gun from you. Ah! Wash your hands first. No, she, 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 she grabbed it with her tail. I forgot to say that part first. Uh, Riku, this gun is really heavy. <laughs> Just saying this. Her tail's really strong. <laughs> I, 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 no, no. S say that in character. Say that in character. Um, careful. The gun is really heavy. Absurdly so. She swallows the food in her mouth um so define heavy well it weights almost 200 pounds so you want the news now or later I'm just saying to be careful it's custom made a good friend made it for me oh I can tell it's custom made by the weight um, the reason I asked you to, to define heavy was because, um, us, us Makote, our tails can very easily carry up to 400 pounds. Oh, uh, in that case, it shouldn't be a problem then. And once you say that, she starts, she, no, she takes a cautious glance at you. And then she begins to show off the level of control she has with her tail because she is very casually um, bouncing and balancing the gun on the tip of her tail. I laugh and I'm all like, don't drop it because it's going to leave a crater on the ground. Um, uh, trust me, I won't. The, the last time I dropped something heavy... Uh, Chief and Zell never let me live it down. Up until about uh, a month ago, actually. Anyway, I'm gonna spend some time analyzing this, and I'll give back to you when I'm done. Yasha yeah, sure, just gives her a thumbs up. Uh, now with that particular scene over, um, Lion Mel, are there any particular interactions you wish to have or comments you wish to say before we continue on? Name. So, uh, what are you gonna do with this gun? Well, I would like to do one of two things uh, it, it's pretty strong all on its own but I want to see if I can make it a little stronger or add some defensive properties to it like a I don't know like a pan guard or something because while, yeah. while it's cool and all uh, and this is pretty much the cause for most if not all the firearms that I've seen personally, uh, leave your hands wide open. And what good is a gunman with a gunman that has bullets or shrapnel in their hands? She's got a point. Fair point. Though, though we do train to make our hands very rough. So we don't accidentally 
drop our firearms in case we get shot in the hand. Right, right. Uh, Either way, there's... There's something I can do to this without needing Zero's help. Don't know how long it'll take me, though. And with that being said, <clears throat> Drava, she is going to very slowly indulge herself on the foods in front of her as she she looks over to everyone, the group as a whole, and she has a she has a smile on her face, but it's one of those nostalgic type of smiles. And this is the first time, uh, Yashua and Mel, that you have seen her smile like that. Aww. Sneak my way beside her. Do I have to roll stealth so she doesn't notice me? Because, like, I want to poke her cheek. Um... That's going to be stealth and sleight of hand, good sir. Let's see if my Metal Gear training pulled off. Okay. Well, she does not necessarily outright see you move or see your hand approaching your face until the very last second of which she turns to ask you what are you doing and you wind up poking her nose. Um can I help you as she's not looking at you she's looking at your finger on her nose at the moment yeah sure I just look just takes the hand back and just laughs at her She is going to let out a small pout and just roll her eyes at you. Forgive me, forgive me. It's just, it's the first time I see you smile like that and I thought it was cute. You should smile like that more often. It's very charming. Well, if we wind up having more well, if I wind up having more moments of nostalgia, I will. I was. Do uh, we remind you of your old group that much? Well, as of this current moment, yeah. Though, you know, without all the flashing lights and this unreasonable assortment of food in front of us uh, yeah it was a uh, a nice trip down memory lane for a quick second <sighs> anyway enough about that so uh, how much longer until the meat is done. She asked that to Cynthia and she says, How did you know there was meat in there? Oh, um, when I was with my old group, we quite often, actually, uh, cooked with behemoth meat. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I guess... I, I guess that's a good excuse for 
knowing. Um, should be done in like, I don't know, another 20 minutes. I did crank the heat up sky high so that we didn't have to wait super, super long. Uh, it's not going to burn to ash, is it? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, behemoth meat is very, very durable. Like, the only, the only way you could cause it to turn to ash if you were to dip it in lava or something. Otherwise, it's, it, it can, it can sit in some fire for a long time. And after saying that, uh, Zero Rosilia, friend, <coughs> whoa, excuse me, uh, Francesca and Regis all enter and they have finished with their city assessment. Zero steps in. Hey guys, how's it go? Yo, damn, who's cooking? And Regis still in super serious mode, being that you can wait to eat later. We we have we have and Regis is very clearly distracted by all of the food in front of him as he walks over and takes a handful for himself and he says You can talk with him about later. We have a then report to the scars. As zero. Hey, you redheaded bastard! Didn't you just tell me I had to wait to eat? Fuck you! As he grabs food for himself. And Francesca and Rosilia, they appear to be on much better terms and what they were earlier as they chuckle to each other and join the rest of you at the at the counter and eat with you all so are the civilians any casualties <clears throat> well Fortunately, there weren't that many injured people, and of the ones that were injured, they all had minor scrapes and bruises. Someone had a had a very, very bad slash on their back, but that's nothing a few stitches won't solve. Um... As for everyone else, um, some mental scarring, and I've I already see early signs of forming PTSD from this, but more or less, most of the civilians are okay, thankfully. Mm. That's good to hear. Agreed. And Zero speaks up. And as for the damages, um, it's nothing a couple days of construction won't fix. Or rather, well, if I kick my, my drones into hyperdrive, nothing a couple hours of construction won't fix. But, um,. They aren't necessarily ready f to be mobilized like that quite yet. But, um... Yeah, there wasn't too much destroyed. It shouldn't cost too much either, but... Shit still needs to be done and handled. Agreed. There's something I want to show you too. As I say that to Zero and to, uh... Frankie. What is it? Look at this map. 
See these X's? These are strike zones. Over here is the elderly, the young, the one with high spiritual power. Hmm. They're planning to strike multiple locations, yet. We just recently got out of one. How are we going to cover all this? Cynthia mentioned that you guys have a private force, but would that be enough? Cynthia is waiting for her opportunity to speak because you can see on Francesca's face that she is very, very intensely analyzing this map, almost as if she's trying to memorize it. And Francesca speaks up. Yes, we we do have a task force specifically for catastrophic level events. However, with how spaced out all of these locations are, we won't be able to hit all of them. However, of the one that is outside of our reach, it seems small enough for you and yours to handle, actually. If you want to take on that task, of course, I won't. Unlike when we were fighting Anat just now, uh, I will not order you to go out and do that if you do not wish to do so. Because if you want to remain within the confines of this district, you can. Because regardless, that's one less spot that people have to suffer through and that we have to deal with. I was earlier, I was planning that on my own, I can actually get to these points rather quickly if I have my Falcon Armor equipped. It shouldn't be a problem for me to get there on my own. I can also bring someone along. That's... this is... <clears throat> this is Regis talking. While that is true... Um... It took you all, and no disrespect, but it took you all how long to deal with the two instances that you've currently dealt with, with the, <coughs> excuse me, with the, well, now, five of you? I don't think that attempting to solo or two man this is a very good idea. Granted. Zero has explained to me the specifications of this falcon armor that you have and while it is very convenient trying to attempt an operation like this with less than what I personally perceive to be the optimal, optimal amount of people probably wind up being a very dangerous and not very good outcome for you all or rather for you and the plus one that does not necessarily mean I doubt your capabilities I just much rather you be safe about it I think safe is an option here, considering the stakes. And, as you say that, Regis begrudgingly silently agrees. And Zero speaks up. And yeah, uh, about that armor of yours. I've... I've had some some drones and some programs scanning it in and out and again I said it the first time I'll say it again that's some 
damn good tech in that thing. And I've almost come up with a way to make it even better. And if you don't mind, um, I would like to mass produce it. Though, that would also require me to have a conversation with the person who made it for you initially, as I'm assuming this is their idea. And I don't want to, as a man in the arms industry, having your ideas stolen sucks. But having your works mass produced in a unified manner is one of the best possible things that could happen. We could worry about that later. But yeah, I'll talk to... I'll talk to the developer about that. Okay. And while we are on the subject of being safe and defensive, <clears throat> how's my prototype armor working out for you all? It hasn't it hasn't had any hiccups on it, have you? During during one of my field tests, I noticed that there's a little bit of a stabilization issue for me. But I managed to adapt with it. Overall, it's a uh, solid armor. That's good to hear. Very good to hear. And... He looks over to the rest of you, and to Zero, he notices that Henry's coat is very slowly turning a fiery crimson red, and Drava's coat is pulsating uh, many different colors, but the majority color is green. Ah, so I see you two have been going kind of crazy with the magic. Henry, I can, well, I know you and I know you like to use fire a lot. But Miss Red Eyes over there, you know quite a bit of magic, don't you? Uh, well, yeah, I, I do. Is that supposed to mean something? Remember when I told you that the coat and well, the rest of the armor will adapt to you and whatever element you decide to use the most yeah where what do you get it oh oh okay now it makes sense and he looks at mel and he says huh so you like to use fire and lightning, is that it? I'm going to take the silence as a yeah. Beep. All right, so, and where's my mic? Now your mic is working. It, it kept cutting out earlier. I was like, yep. And then you're like, I'll take the silence as a no and as a yes. And I'm like, I said yes. <sighs> All right. And as for our new friend, all cloaked up. Um, did you also want to test run the armor, even though what you already have now looks pretty decent actually um are there gonna be any benefits to me since I'm not really a magic user I don't have a primary like type of magic well as it is adaptive armor in general uh, if you use it long enough, it'll 
in a way mold itself to adjust to you and then whenever you decide to give it back I can make further adjustments if I can determine what would be the most beneficial after I receive it I guess it couldn't hurt alright I don't have a spare set now but I'll, I'll get you one soon soon enough Roger that. And with that being said, the timer on the stove goes off, and before anyone can react, Cynthia darts over to the stove, takes the food out, and darts right back to the counter. And before you is a very very large pan of steaming and very well done behemoth meat. And upon consumption of the food, everyone gains plus one constitution. Nice. 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 tired of this meat. My eyes are watering when I eat the behemoth meat. <laughs> Tears of joy. Alright, alright. Sounds good. Dreva, she is trying not to more or less inhale her portion of the food, but she has an extremely satisfied look on her face. Okay. That does it. After all this is done, I'm hunting down a behemoth. Dreva. She laughs. And Regis also laughs at, at you saying that. And they both say at the same time, in perfect accidental unison, yeah, that's pretty par for the course after someone eats it a couple of times. And after that, they both look at each other in a matter of, how did you know I was going to say that? And then, uh, Zero and Cynthia and Francesca all laugh at the two of them. And Roselia takes her opportunity to speak up. And she says, So, um, you all had a, had one of the priests with you. Are they? He's dead. Unfortunately. He's what? Tried to interrogate him, question him, though I was trying to be very subtle, not very aggressive. I didn't really want to kill him, but Henry, he got too excited. Now thinking about it, that is quite strange. Xander did mention he was augmented to have a ridiculous amount of heat resistance, yet he couldn't handle a few sparks of electricity. Odd. And. Roselia and Francesca both interject and say, Who is Xander? Oh, Xander is the red chocobo that was here uh, a few minutes ago. And when you say red chocobo, as Regis is taking a drink of his water, he quite literally. <coughs> You a what? What did you just say? A red chocobo? It's a little red bird that I rescued on my way here. And uh 
he ate one of the Ignostones that came out of the the watch we have here. Ah, oh, yeah, there's that. He ate an Ignis stone, and he he also gave us a whistle to call him down in case we find more Ignis stones for him to devour. Regis still has a look of shock and confusion on his face, but he he kind of like he slouches back in his chair, and he begins sliding down with. Fuck is going on? Okay, so my 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 questions about why in the 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 name of the great deity of a red chocobo being here aside, you're telling me you managed to befriend one of them? Why is not is that not supposed to happen? No. Under very extremely microscopically rare circumstances, are red chocobos ever friendly with people? I don't know how you could say that. He's real cute and fluffy. He was like uh he was real playful with me when I rescued him. Also, earlier when he was here, he helped us recover from our exhaustion. He was sitting on my shoulder, eventually on my head. And Regis is just blown out of the water as he is trying to come up with something else to say. But he eventually just relents and says, okay, I believe you. I'm just still in shock over it as well. The last time I saw a red chocobo, uh, suddenly the ground in front of me ceased to exist. So, wow, very interesting. Just, just who are you people exactly? You know, that Chocobo did mention he could blow up a continent. At the planet. Though, I'll be honest, I think he's exaggerating about half the planet. And this time, Rosalia interjects and says, No, that's actually very true. Because, um, in my dimension, where I come from, we kind of have a red chocobo problem as well um so for us visiting other planets is more or less like walking through a door and well people get a bit too cocky and they wind up angering the adult red chocobos and well, that half of the planet is gone afterwards so that bit about being able to knock out half the planet i he wasn't lying or it wasn't lying oh is that right yeah. well in that case i think red chocobos will fit in in my reality then since we're capable of repairing and reconstructing worlds a good countermeasure. Well then. And... You said his name was Xander? He mentioned... Yeah, he, he mentioned he had other names, but he said he was going to stick with Xander. Probably those were names of power, I imagine. Um... And you said it was... Small, yes? Yeah, a little chick. He could literally just sit on top of your head and you, you won't feel its weight. After saying that, Rosalia gets lost in thought. 
and Francesca interjects and she says, Well, for the time being, let's just assume that it's on our side and isn't particularly bloodthirsty or anything. Um, as for mobilization efforts to deal with this problem, I am working out the logistics of that now in my head, and I'm pretty sure it's going to take quite a while now that I think about it. You mentioned a watch and Ignis Stone. You said it ate the stone? Yeah, he just wolfed right. it down. Hmm. We might have a better ally on our hands than I think. And this watch, where is this watch? I would like to see it myself. Oh, here it is. I hand it. She receives the watch from you. And... Zero pulls out the crystal key mechanism and he splits it apart and he lines up the indentations with each other and it clicks the top half of the watch where the face would be slowly begins to rotate on its own and then it stops hmm very very interesting so it seems like these two work in tandem with each other and this unlocks a mechanism that I'm going to assume has something to do with our currently non-existing Ignis stone but what does the other half do as there is no other place to insert it into the watch. Hmm. Draver speaks yeah, up. Sure. Oh, go, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna like flip the map over to the other side to actually see if there's anything. Again. Oh, so you want to reinspect the back half of the map? Yep. And please do yet another. I believe I had you do intelligence and insight. I think it was history. Oh, was it history? Pretty sure. Or no, maybe not. Intelligence and in insight. Yeah, you know, let's just go with intelligence and insight. Okay. So you reinspect the map again. And you reread the Interrogant and Exigen, Exigen project. However, right up under that, you can see just the smallest bit of fine line text. And you also see what appears to be a small description for what the other half of the crystal key is supposed to do but it is while you can see it it is barely legible to you i literally just shoved the the map at zero's face look 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 i can't read it but maybe you can the other half of the key. Um. Let me see here. Dubs. He, he, he's looking at it. He's reading it. And. He manages to spot that. Holy shit. So. Okay. I think. I think I've got it. So the top half 
goes into these very specific watches that once the mechanism is unlocked I think it's supposed to either prep the Ignis stone or immediately set it off <clears throat> and the other half goes into this cylindrical shaped mechanism as a power source I believe but where is it and what is its real purpose what is it supposed to be powering and once that is said Francesca she sits she ponders on it for a second and she comes to the conclusion of well this is supposed to be powering whatever this destruction device is supposed to be for this bullshit project that they have going on and uh, I and therefore we cannot let this slide so I say that I am going to take this information and continue analyzing it. I'm, it's probably going to be an all night process. You all go to the hotel, get some real genuine rest, and meet back here in the morning. By that time, I should have a plan of action worked out. And Regis, Cynthia, and Zero speak up and say, Nah, that's bullshit. You're not working on that by yourself. We're going to help you. In their own special, unique ways, of course. And Francesca, she begins to fight back and argue and Regis cuts her off by saying listen I get I get it All right. if 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 the hospital was at such a high risk like this and only the hospital I'd be trying to solve all of this on my own but it's not just the hospital. It's the entire goddamn city. And I know you want to protect the district as this is your domain. But all of this solo work bullshit cut, <coughs> cut it out. All right. This is a city-wide threat, and you're going to need all the help that you can. And Roselia, she speaks up, and she says, um, Regis is right, and I more than likely don't have any rhyme or reason to be, you know, speaking out of turn like this, as I am still technically a hostage but when dealing with these disgusting motherfuckers this isn't a this isn't a one person job and thought process you're going you're going to need help as he said and having worked with them prior before I managed to break away I can help out as well Though my knowledge will be limited, I can still do something. And with that being said, Francesca doesn't even attempt to refute what they said. And she 
she stands up she thanks you all the party for your contributions and she prepares to lock herself away in her office if there's anything you want to say and do you can do it now before uh, she will no longer be able to be able to be interacted with for the remainder of this day I got uh, nothing to say mm -hmm. okay with that being said Francesca moves to her office space and she tells you all to come back in the morning after you've gotten some good rest. We just follow suit behind her and so does Cynthia followed by Rosalia. And Zero speaks up, well uh, what's that saying? Um, uh, something along the lines of like, I'm not kicking you out, but you can't stay here, or how the damn saying goes. Uh, whenever you guys are ready, you can go on and head back to the hotel and rest up. Because we don't know what the fuck's going to happen tomorrow. Alright. Alright, brother. I'll catch you guys tomorrow then. Sleep, Sleep well. well. Echo. 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 I don't think there's an echo anymore. You're not muted in roll 20. <gasps> there you go. So, on this day, the scene will now fade to black as there's been a lot of fighting, a lot of newfound information, some heart to heart felt moments as the leader of the entertainment district is now working her hardest and pushing herself to her limits and beyond to come up with a proper method to get one step closer to neutralizing this very large and very quickly growing threat. And the day will come to a close and we will resume the next day. It is now around say 9.30 a.m. Uh, everyone has been well, rest well rested and if you would want to have an interaction of you are meeting up in the morning you can do so if not uh, we'll go right back to uh, Francesca's office Priority one. Where's the kitchen? <laughs> uh, in the There's hotel. No yeah. Um. You can go up to the. You can go up to the front desk and ask. Guys, we can't start a mission without breakfast. That is very true. Actually, screw that. I want Cynthia to make something good. Where the hell is Cynthia? Uh, she should be at the club. Yeah, that's true. So let's head to the club and get breakfast there instead. Mm, Cynthia's food. Okay. 
Uh, anything else in particular, or are we good? I think I'm good. Mm -hmm. We are good. We. <laughs> well, alrighty. So, the party gets their bangs together, they handle their hygiene, they do any quick double checks on their weapons, the gear as a whole, and they meet at the front entrance, and they walk and talk amongst themselves. Panic and a half, Yashua forgets that there's a gun missing, and then alt right, Cynthia has it. <laughs> As you all are making your way over, you do happen to notice some of the damage that Zero was talking about. Not Zero. Zero and Regis were talking about. I'm going to say regroup with you all last night. And there is several. Con there are several construction crews already working to repair the damages and they are working quite fast as a matter of fact but your walk eventually ends you find yourselves back at Francesca's place and all of you immediately pile into her office space as well, well you guys do making way to the kitchen Okay. i So, you all enter inside. Minus Yashua because he is on the pursuit of food. You get there. You greet everybody. And they look drained. And if, if there were smoke coming out of their ears as if they were a recently super overclocked computer uh, you can tell that they work their noggins really really hard coming up with plans and strategies etc etc you guys look like you haven't slept at all uh we did. This is Cynthia speaking. Uh, we did. For a grand total of about 10 minutes. Oh. Yeah, we, um... That's not much. No. Not... Not at all. Um... E. What we... So right after you all left, we immediately got to work, and there was no room for any level of BS conversations and we kept working, and we kept working, and we kept working. And it was actually Regis's idea to take a, a quick break. You know, with him being a, a doctor and all that. So he knows what he's talking about. And we all took a... We took a magic-induced 10-minute power nap. So, realistically, while we in real time slept for about 10 minutes via the spell our bodies were tricked into thinking that we slept for 10 hours so we, we could continue working but the spell wore off about an hour before you all got here which is why we look as tired as we do And Cynthia hears the sound of breaking glass as she bolts out of the office and into the the kitchen area and is like, what the fuck did you break? Huh? Something broke? Uh, I don't know. I'm making breakfast. You guys want some? What the fuck did you break? If nothing broke, then why did I hear the sound of something breaking? Yeah, sure, it just kicks <laughs> the, the glass under the fucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I, I try to distract her. Oh, I don't think anything broke. As I, I Yoshua trying to like. You're not in the kitchen though. Up. I'm not, motherfucker. Yoshua, you're on your own. Oh, oh, um, uh, roll deception, please. <laughs> I'm gonna die here. <laughs> About to see just how strong a Makote tail is. Okay, I'm going to have her roll charisma. Oh, yep, something broke. All right. So, um, not really a fan of you trying to hide the fact that something broke. I also. Should have explained to you how good Makote ears are as well. So, uh, you want to show me what you broke? Yeah, sure. Looks around. I don't know what broke. I just heard something and I panicked. <sighs> she ever so slightly moves you out of the way to see. A glass that broke, but that glass happened to be one of the bouncer's favorite cup. Oh, uh oh. What was it? An explosive I broke? No, you just broke Mick's favorite cup. He's uh, he's not gonna be happy about this. Who's who? Oh, one of our, one of our bouncers. Yasha oh, folds his arms and thinks. Bouncer. Um, like a bodyguard. Yeah, but for the club. Oh. Well, that's unfortunate. I just uh, buy him a new club. Well, it's not that simple. Uh, he's had that cup since he was 12 years old. And he is, in a week, will be 34. In Palamecian time, anyway. Yashua takes a step back. Oh, but accidentally steps more of the glass. It's <laughs> like painful expression. And Cynthia, she face palms and says, maybe you should just stop moving backwards. How? Actually, actually, let's do this. She uses her tail to pick you up by your belt on your pants and moves you behind her. Yasha yeah, gasps in disbelief. <gasps> Do it again. Really? I'm about to throw you over the counter. <laughs> that, that that that's a that's a genuine really. It's not it's not a sarcasm type of really. Sorry. It's just that was fun. Well, first time for everything. Um, I'll just tell him that it broke while we were fighting, and uh, oh, I have to explain to him what what's even happening anyway, because he is on vacation right now. Anyway, would uh, you like some bacon and eggs? There's potatoes there too. What bacon and eggs? Then. Then you see what I was typing? I'm making bacon and eggs with potatoes. Uh, you look back at the pans, and the pans are empty. I'm gonna, uh. Damn, she straight up ate it. Oh my god! Why do you keep doing this? Listen. I told you last night, I can't not eat, okay? And I okay. hadn't eaten all night. Okay, okay. But, you know, I made a lot. For everyone. You just ate it all! Oh, that was for everyone? 
Damn. This time y'all show face palms. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'll. I'll Just make help me make breakfast. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll make some more. You go in the office. Uh, Frankie would like all of you to be in there for what she's about to tell you. Somersault over the counter. Counter. Okay. Now that everyone is here and accounted for. I've come up with two plans as far as attacking all of these strike points at the same time. <clears throat> Plan number one or A or whatever the hell you want to call it. She and as she says that she waves her hand over her monitor and all of the information and battle strategies that the four of them have come up with are projected in front of you. Alright. So. With the current task force with our members that are ready to fight and aren't away on other special missions we have enough people to hit 10 of the 12 points at once. Now, where you all come in, we can do one of two things. We can form a cohesive team and take care of one of them as quickly as possible with the assistance of either myself, Regis, Zeril, or Cynthia. Or, we can release Roselia from her shackles and allow her and Cynthia to combine their arcane knowledge together to handle one of the points while you all will have a slight liberty to take your time with the other point of interest. But with this plan, it has to be followed to the letter. Meaning, there will not be any deviations and as she says that she she's closing her eyes and she's looking dead center at Henry. All you hear from Yashua is this. He's opening a bag of chips while you're listening to the plan. And Regis he chimes in. And he says, now, with whichever plan you decide to go along with, this is what we learned during our, I suppose, intelligence phase last night. So the, the order in which they deal with these points is, is that they, with that pocketbook that you all found, they first find a group of people at a very specific time of day. That's what that's what the the notes on the map and such are for. And they find one of their priests to begin spouting their bullshit while also casting one of the many spells in the book. And once they amass a big enough audience once the spell finishes, they are immediately placed under their control and are at the victim of the caster. So, uh, I believe your name was Mel. 
when you were fighting the other night and you told us that as you prepared to strike the priest one of the victims in the crowd grabbed your weapon at his beck and call correct yes okay now there is a method of neutralizing the spell but it is incredibly dangerous as method one requires you to strike the afflicted's temple or method two he takes out a series of talisman papers with within I believe according to Roselia within 30 seconds of the spell's completion if this is placed anywhere on their body the victim will fall unconscious but as long as the caster is alive and or conscious they will no longer have to deal with the spell meaning they won't be puppetized but that also requires you being in a very dangerous situation because if you happen to be overwhelmed well you're going to run out of time to use the talisman what's the other option to literally smack them in the temple Yashua yes. raises a finger. Would that be easier? Uh, it would be easier, but with the woman of your strength, you might accidentally kill them. Mm. And <laughs> we want to have as little civilian death as possible. Yashua, you were going to say something? Uh, yeah. Does destroying the book do anything? Say a well placed bullet in the book. Well, that would be great. Uh, the book and the caster are linked. So, destroying the book would. It would lessen the duration of the spell, but it wouldn't outright cancel it. The caster, if they managed to finish the incantation, they would have to be defeated, killed, knocked unconscious, whatever, for the spell to end. Immediately. Mm. <clears throat> okay. I guess I need to use the book. These casters, you Shank think these them. casters are leaders in their group? Rosila speaks up. Yes. Um, most of them, or rather, most of the priests and the ones on the high council, um, they all happen to carry the books with them because it is significantly easier to read it off as compared to memorizing a five minute long incantation. Or rather, the shorter ones are on the five minute mark. The longer ones can take upwards of 20 plus minutes to read and cast the entire thing from start to finish. They are very, very long spells, but the reason that they are so long is because once the caster has the attention of the target, they slowly begin to worm their way into the victim's soul like a parasite. And once, once it has its, its, its hooks in the target, unless the source of the spell is taken care of it'll be too late but say they're in the middle of casting the spell is there a way to negate before it's cast say yes. hit him hard enough and he'll stop chanting and then probably he'll have does he have to start all over again or can he just continue off well, that all depends. Uh, in relativity to how far they were into the incantation, if they had just started, if you strike them, they will be able to stop. 
However, if they were near completion, uh, because at that point they will be in a self-induced trance, you'll damn near have to, well, cut their vocal cords or outright knock the book out of their hands for them to be stopped. But yes, th there are methods to stop it as it is being casted. This might be a lot easier than I thought. I'm just gonna have to snatch the book from him then. Or shoot his hands. Well, as this is Francesca speaking, as easy as I would like for all of this to be, based on Rosalia's personal accounts, um, when they are operating in a coordinated manner, such as this, there are far, far more of them than what you all have dealt with previously. So, for that small group of about six that you initially had to deal with, these larger groups travel in about packs of 12. And all of them are very well adept uh, arcane users. As if one of them were to die, again, according to Roselia, if they were to die mid incantation and they were already in that trance like state, they can transfer over that trance like state to someone else and they will be able to continue the spell. And that, that's why so many of them travel at once as to have their chances of success be as high as possible. Yashua kind of frowns and he folds his arms and thinks to himself. Hmm. However, this is where all of your unique abilities come in. As Yashua, you are a very good marksman, from what I understand. Dreva, Henry. The two of you are very well adept with the arcane and magic. And Mel, you are exponentially very well adept at more or less causing physical mayhem. <laughs> so I don't think you all would have to try that hard to interrupt the incantation, but there, there's always room for safety. However, if you do recall, Mel, when you had your interaction with the priest, you managed to distract him long enough for the spell to just end. Because according to Roselia, when she inspected his body, as he was unconscious, he was still in his trance-like state. So it seems mm -hmm. that not only can it be interrupted by inflicting physical harm, if you have well enough distraction, the trance can be broken and therefore the spell can be broken. I've had experience with that priest <laughs> pissed me off, but yes, you are not incorrect. And amidst all these explanations, Cynthia silently re-enters the office and hands everyone food as but she when she hands you all your food, she does a shh motion with her tail as to let everyone continue talking. And it is now Zero's turn to speak up and he says And another thing too <coughs> Shadow eyes over there since he doesn't want to show her damn face has also said that those bastards 
are typically carrying those uh those crystal keys and those ignis stones shards crystals whatever you want to call them with them and while they are not all the same they do carry similar watch like mechanisms on their person and yes they are genetically modified and altered to be able to withstand the heat but if that mechanism happens to be activated um abort the mission immediately because it primes the crystal for explosion and it is a very dangerous explosion and if you are let's just say that if you're anywhere close you better pray and I mean pray that you'll still have your life afterwards because according to how she described them if those things are used as bombs anything within the immediate area is just dead <clears throat> because I know you all are tougher than normal I, I'm I think you could probably take a hit plus you're wearing gear that I made so that should be an added benefit to you all and once he says that you remember that when he handed you all the experimental gear it has a a prototype reactive system in it and that if you are to take damage the damage will be slightly reduced and it will be stored as backup energy to be used for various other circumstances. So, well, that always well, liked using bombs. <laughs> well, oh, it's a joke. well, regardless, um, we've come up with a pretty decent plan. We just have to wait for the moment of truth to put all this into action. And, well, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Chief explain this last part. And Francesca, she sits back down at her desk, and she says that, based off of Roselia's again personal experience and her intel, limited as it was, it seems that their leader might might be in attendance of one of these strike points that or the leader of their high council might be there just to facilitate the progress of what they are doing if you encounter him or see him if it can be avoided, do not engage. We do, we do not know what this person is capable of, as even Roselia has never seen this person lift a finger to deal with any type of threat or problem in front of them. So, if you see someone that appears to be a leader leave them alone if they are present at whichever of the two sites you decide to go to immediately turn around and come back we will reroute one of our tasks for us to deal with them instead as you all would move to a different location Understand? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you're saying, kill the leader, okay. <laughs> Uh, as much as much as I would like to fuck up the leader, I'm not taking that risk. Not without information. Pussy shit. Fuck hey, that, so If one of those watches does start glowing, you're like, what if we just call Xander to eat the watch? Xander is still an infant. And Jay was messed up. No, he said he wasn't in his infant state. And plus, he eats them for fun. As mm. Francesca, she, for a moment, the serious face on her kind of falters at the <clears throat> at the mention of <laughs> at the mention of yes, sir, as she like very quickly uh, fixes her hair in order to appear oh. more ladylike. <laughs> and then oh, no. she says yes about your your feathered friend Xander um wait if... hold on Marie. huh can I roll perception on that perception on what on like um because like on the mention of sir she did like Weird voodoo shit. Hey, not weird voodoo shit, but like she reacted in a way. I don't want to like do perception. I want to see if I can like read into that. Uh, okay. Okay, fuck if I really wish I got this. Wait, you trying to find out she's the giant trap or something? <laughs> <laughs> My curiosity has peaked. Um, fuck, where are you? Perception, perception. Here we go. Um, at the action of her fixing her hair, you are looking over her, and you're, uh, I guess, low-key checking her out, and all in all, you can tell that she is indeed a woman. She's just a lot more, let's just say, built compared to your average woman. Then again, this is the only elf woman you've met who happens to be eight feet tall and as muscular as she is. True. Mm -hmm. Now... I forgot. Um, where was I? Yes, continue on. As for your friend Xander, uh, yes. The good observation and good mention, Lion. If those watches happen to be activated, uh, please, by all means, blow the hell out of that whistle and get him to eat the damn crystal. I don't even know how those got into the city in the first place, though I could probably hazard a guess as Zero interjects. Oh yeah, I got your guess for you, Chief. It's that bastard who's trying to take your spot. You know, as leader of the district, and your and your mom's spot, and the other guy's spot, the guys who've been trying to take control of the city in general. Zero. Even as your assumptions gain more and more ground, we are not going to run that story yet. Not yet. Whatever you say, boss. Whatever you say. And reaches, he cleared his throat. <clears throat> now then, with all of this said and done, do you all understand the task before you? Yes. Uh, fuck shit up and save the people. <laughs> On it, yeah, yeah. Fuck bitches, get money. Yashua sighs. <laughs> what about the civilians that get caught in all this? I did say save the people. 
Well, if... If someone... Happens to be caught in the crossfire as you all fight... I trust and believe that you all... Minus Henry... Will take the appropriate measures to... Get them safely away from harm. <sighs> now then, as for where you all can go, the sites that are here in the entertainment district and not halfway across the city. There is the northern end and the western end. Wherever you go, Cynthia and Roselia, they will be going to the location that you don't go. Along with ample amounts of backup. Unless Zero can um, finish up getting his drones together. Yeah, about that, Doc. I just got a notification. They just finished up. So they don't have to go anywhere. And Drava, what, what are... What... What... What are you talking about? Right, so... As I'm sure the cat told you, I make a lot of machines. I make a lot of weapons. And I have some, well, when I say some, I mean a few hundred. And let's just say that of these hundred, they have the opportunity to significantly amplify one's magical abilities. Meaning that with whatever crazy magic mumbo jumbo plan that these two came up with, they don't have to leave the office. They can channel it through the drones and then the drones will expel that energy. So, where do you guys want to go? Mm. This is the worst option. Are you saying that in character? Yes. Uh. Fucking. He, Zero looks at you and he has a face that's fucking psycho. Um. The... I catch him, I'm like, I listen here, bitch. <laughs> if we can take the harder pace, we're gonna take the harder pace. Okay. So, since you want it so bad, the worst option is the northern side as... As, as we s decided to scan the rest of the map that was illegible, uh, there is a club that is going to be attacked, but that location is apparently going to have a group of about 15 of those bastards going there. If you really want to deal with that, be my guest. Fifteen. Sounds like fun. Sounds like fun. I look, I look towards my team. I right, guys, are you down? Are you down with the sickness? <laughs> I like this one. Yashua just shrugs. I don't care where we go. Okay. Well, get your <clears throat> get your shit ready. Double check everything. 
because at 4.30 we're gonna get moving and it's gonna be chaotic for a, a long time I just want you to know <laughs> right before that Cynthia you think you'll be finished scanning my revolver by that time um if I speed up the process and borrow one of Zero's uh, drones yeah I will be and you Zero you think uh, my armor will be ready by then that's that's gonna be a no but what I can do is I can give you these as a matter of fact I can give all of you these and he hands you what appears to be uh, cufflinks oh. he gives you some for each of your each of your sleeves and he gives you what looks like an ankle bracer. I'm, I'm not, not, not an ankle bracer, two ankle bracers. Always wondered what it would be like to be on house arrest. <laughs> uh, I love it, okay. So, well, uh, this is not you being on house arrest. Um, jump and see what happens. Yashua leaps. You jump, and the ankle bracers turn into jets. I think I jumped too hard. <laughs> Hit my head on the ceiling. Oh, Lion with his stellar as hell uh, athletics roll, he jumps up high enough to where he is almost touching the ceiling with his head. Oh fuck, I have to roll for that too. Well, I mean, I wasn't gonna make you do it, but you can if you want to. Okay, if I don't have to. I'm going to. Wanna crash. Well, these are dope. <laughs> Yashua jumps, hits the roof of the ceiling, just crashes down at the. <laughs> <laughs> just crashes down in the corner here. Oh, my bad. They work as they should. They work. Alright. Now. Uh, I haven't used these in quite a while. They do have a bit of limited fuel in them. Is what I would say normally. But. They. Are. Th their fuel source is your magic. So, if you have to make a quick getaway, make sure you're not too exhausted. You st you also still have the um the zip line that I gave you with the rest of your gear. So you you have options of escape. Just if you have to use them, use them, buddy. You just gave me air superiority. <laughs> There's no way I'm running away now. Well, you do you. I, I trust you all. Well, maybe not Henry, but I trust the rest of you. Yeah. And what are these uh cufflinks do? Uh, these are these are to augment the zip lines that I gave you all. So if you were to use them to take the air and swing around back and forth, uh, there would be two additional wires to support the main one. So, in the event that you think it might break, it won't. 
You can also use them to, uh, well, if you ever want to turn yourself into a slingshot, feel free. A slingshot. Badass. He's giving us the means to turn into a catapult. Yeah, well, whatever helps you all take care of this problem, I'm gonna give you the stuff. Ah, oh, I almost forgot. Do you have grenades? Uh, no, I don't have any of those with me. Joshua frowns. I'm pretty sure you all have enough magic to make one out of thin air or something. Joshua scoffs at the thought. I can't use magic. The only thing I know is cure. <laughs> I mean, that's... It's better than nothing. I'm sure you can find a way to... Use the power of healing to hurt something. Yeah, it only works for undead. Eh, it'll work out for you. Now then. I'm sure Mel, I'm sure Mel can uh, cook up some kind of bomb. Uh, well, with, with how often she likes to dump her magic into her sword, eh, she can do something. Now then. I'm going to go finish preparing my drones and take a nap. With that being said, everyone that worked on formulating the plans, they take to themselves and Get ready to get ready to uh, make sure the mission goes as well as possible, and they all take their leave, with the exception of Francesca, who presses a button on her desk, and her desk very quickly changes into a bed. Well, that's my cue to leave. <laughs> and Cynthia yeah, sure. sits on the sits on the chair here. Yeah, Cynthia has all of you leave the office. Damn, I wanted to share a bed with the eight foot elf. <laughs> <laughs> and uh this person. <laughs> and she says, Well you all are free to hang out here, I guess. And, um, just keep an eye on your, your watches. A little copy. Well, I asked the party, what are you guys going to do? Because I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go wander around a bit. None of us eat, none of us have eaten breakfast yet, so I'm nope. sure we did we did already, right? Yeah, you guys, because as yeah. as you were being debriefed, uh, Cynthia gave you all food. Bird. Yasha just walks out and just waves. I'll catch you guys later. All right. Yashua has a bad habit of wandering around. No, I will explain later why he does this. Okay. Not a problem. Not a problem indeed. that 
with the party now having their mission objective in hand they are as prepared as they are in this current moment to get ready to deal with this massive threat the session will come to an end for today uh, you got 10 we seconds got a storm coming. Yeah, th there's there's a large storm coming, and honey, there's a large storm coming. They're gonna they're gonna deal with some shit, and it's it's gonna be a wild ride. So you got ten seconds to get your fake sponsorships out now. Please sponsor like us, please. <laughs> like the video, or Yashua will flirt with your mother. Don't test him. Subscribe, oh, baby. Fuck your mother. That's different. Wait, what? <laughs> 